In this video, I'm just going to be walking you through how I created this image that's a sort of sequel slash reimagining of an image I made a while back. That's it. That's all I got for you. Now roll that way too long intro I need to make shorter. To get things started, I brought in this cloud image to be the background. Then dropped in this different cloud image and dropped its opacity a bit to blend the two together. This will form our basic sky background. Then I wanted to use this image of a bridge to have in front of the machine so I could put a character on it and really be able to show the huge scale of the machines. First though, I need to mask away the background and some of the elements of it like the light poles and the railing. I painted in my own railing that was lower so it wouldn't totally block the character that I'll be adding to it later. Then I went ahead and added in some foreground rocks to start forming the terrain. Here's the machine I'm calling a planet cracker. Kind of a giant futuristic excavator machine used to mine rare materials from distant barren planets. There's some elements of this image that make it look so much smaller than I want it to look, mainly these windows and this ladder. So using the clone stamp tool, I spent some time meticulously removing them. After that, I noticed the lighting used in this original image produced pretty harsh shadows all over the place, which wasn't going to match the overcast atmosphere of the planetscape I was setting this machine in. So I used the clone stamp again to go all around and either remove completely or soften the edges of all the shadows. Fun. But it looks way better now. I brought it into the main composition and positioned one closer to the foreground and another one further off in the distance. Now to add something to the background, I used this image of some mountains, duplicated and flipped it to extend it just a little bit, moved it behind everything, and then masked it out from its background. To further add some detail, I put in these ships. I made them different sizes to show them flying on different planes with respect to the camera. It'll be more obvious once we add some atmospheric perspective and give everything some more depth. First though, let's fix the brightness of everything, starting with these rocks in the foreground. I just used levels to darken them down some. I had this planet cracker machine layer set as a smart object, so I just opened that up and used a levels adjustment to darken it down as well. While I was in here, I wanted to go ahead and add some other lighting effects to it. So I masked that levels adjustment around the top edges of the machine to show some light coming from slightly above. Then I added a curves adjustment and lightened it some, and used blend if to isolate that adjustment to just the brighter areas. There, now the machines are properly lit for the scene and have some dimension. Now let's darken the mountains in the background as well with a curves adjustment. And I'll go ahead and paint on the mountains mask to kind of fade them into the distance some. And darken the ships and add some atmospheric haze over them to kind of push them into the distance some. I just painted over them on a new layer with the color of the sky and adjusted the opacity of that layer until they were each as far into the distance as I wanted them to be. Just remember, the further away you want something, the hazier they should look, with less contrast. Now, let's paint in some jet trails from the engines. Cool. I felt like the mountains needed to be a little further back in the distance, so just like with the ships, I painted over them with the color of the sky and adjusted the opacity until I felt like they had been pushed far enough back. Then just did the exact same thing with the machines to lower their contrast a bit. Here I used a smoke brush and added in some dust and fog to add more separation between the bridge and the machines. This helped with showing the scale as well. The space here under the bridge was looking a little bit empty so I brought in some more rocks. I darkened them and pushed them back so they were between the bridge and the machine. I added even more atmospheric perspective by putting some more haze between the two machines to help show that there was meant to be quite a bit of distance between the two of them. Then I used a cloud brush to paint a little cloud in front of this machine just to help show how tall it is. You know like how the tops of mountains will sometimes have a little mini atmosphere forming around them. And put some more haze between the bridge and machines for scale. See, in order for the machines to look as large as I want, they have to be far off in the distance, and the further in the distance they are, the more atmospheric haze they need. But they still need to be really large in the image. That's why haze is so important when you want to show depth and scale. Now, the machines need some kind of cockpit for the operators to see out of. So I made that by just drawing a thick line and using bevel and emboss in the layer styles dialog box to give it edges. Then painted an interior overhead light, added a highlight around the edges, and a glow around the whole thing. 
then put in a couple of silhouettes of the crew. After looking at the whole thing, I really didn't like the bright yellow color, so I just darkened it down and faded that color with a hue saturation adjustment, and made sure to add all of this to the other machine. I kind of felt like this core thing was messing with the size perspective, so I just went ahead and removed it. Now to add some things to the bridge. I started by putting this futuristic radio antenna thing I found on there. I thought that looked pretty cool, so went ahead and blended it in by darkening, color correcting, and adding highlight. Then put in a couple more across the bridge. Made these wires coming off the antennas by just stroking a pin path, and did the same thing for these under the bridge. I also just masked away some parts of these wires down here to show the fog passing over and between them here and there. Now let's add some lights to the antennas, and add a glow to them. Now bring in the figure, mask him out, make him a little thinner, and put him between the railing. Now let's give him a cool cape, and a rifle. See, he's out here patrolling, keeping a lookout for any local wildlife that might try to attack workers on the ground or get into the machinery and damage something. And he's just stopped to admire and be in awe of these massive technological marvels. He sees them every day, but rarely ever stops to just look at them and marvel at their size. They're beautiful in their own way. Whoa, whoa, what? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, okay, I'm back. So I painted a slight highlight on him from the diffuse sunlight and put a light on the rifle to make it, uh, more future -y. For another little detail, because of how large these machines are, I imagined people would be able to walk around on top of them to either be able to access equipment for maintenance or for watchmen to patrol as well. So let's put a railing around this part. And someone walking around up there. Let's give them some extra light to see what they're doing. By the way, all the lights and glows I've added so far, I'm doing with the glow gradient technique that I pretty much use in every image in which I go into more depth on in this video here. Now let's just put this railing on the other machine too. There. Because these machines are so large, they need some warning lights on them so the ships flying around can see them through the dust and fog. So let's put one here, and another one way up here. Now the problem is the machines look practically brand new. I want to grunge them up so they look like they've been in use for a while. To do that, I clip this texture layer I found to the machine and put it on the multiply blending mode. Then just masked it away in parts until it looked dirty enough. I added just a little more haze and fog, this time to the foreground. And now we're ready to start playing around with color grading. I started by shifting the sky color to a little more of a pink color with a hue saturation adjustment. Then played around a bit in the camera raw filter, just added some clarity and contrast overall and some blue color into the bottom half of the image. Now for the subtly illustrated look I like to have in a lot of my images, I traced around outside of all the elements in the image with a hard brush. Then duplicated that, added a Gaussian blur to it just to blur it a little bit and changed the color to a more reddish color. Duplicated the hard line again and added a larger Gaussian blur to that. Grouped those three lines together and then masked it into the areas where I wanted it. It's fairly subtle, but it adds a small amount of detail. Next, I added just a little more haze around the lighter parts of the image, and just a little more color grading with a color lookup adjustment that enhances the colors. And as I sometimes do, I also felt like adding some paint texture. I go into detail of how I do this in this same video. It's some small nitpicks, but I did fix how the haze was on this figure here, and added some rips and tears to his cape, and made him a little bit smaller and put just a tiny bit of light flare along this edge. Okay, we're getting close to done, but I don't think I like this color grading. It's just too pretty. I think this would look cooler if we showed how these machines are kicking up dust and debris into the air and polluting the atmosphere. So I played around with curves, camera raw, and a few other effects to make it look more orange and industrial. I think that looks better, but what do you think? For the final touch, I added a little more light glare to a couple of areas, 
and I think it's pretty much done. Alright, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and be sure to follow Damage Work on Instagram. You know, if you want. Which you should, because you watched this far. So you must not hate it, right? Come on. Just do it. Do it!